What is the volume of a rectangular prism with a length of 54 centimeters, a height of 69 centimeters, and a width of 23 centimeters? Is the answer A, B, C, D, or E? And I've given you the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism right here on the test. You will have this formula, but you'll have to look it up on the formula sheet. But to save time, I put this right here for you. So if you'd like to, you can pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so basically for this question here, all we have to do is just use this formula. So I'm going to do the width, which we know is 23, and I'm going to do width times the length, which is 54, times our height, which is 69. Now, you could, the order that you multiply these doesn't matter. You could do 69 times 54 times 23. The order is not important, but the, but the idea here is you just want to multiply width, length, and height. And if you just plug that in your calculator, you're going to get answer D, which is the correct answer here. If Stan had $1,000 in his bank account at the beginning of October, during October, Stan had to pay $615 for his rent, $75 for his electric bill, and $50 for his cable bill. He received one paycheck worth $750 and won $200 playing the lottery. What was Stan's bank balance at the end of October? Is it A, B, C, D, or E? So now's your chance if you'd like to to pause the video, try to figure this question out, and take all the time you need, and we're just going to go over it whenever you're ready. Okay, so let's start off here. Uh, at the beginning of October, Stan has $1,000 in his bank account. So let's just fall right along here. So then he has to pay $715 for his rent. So if he's paying his rent, right, he's we're going to subtract, all right? So if he's spending money, we're going to subtract, right? And so then he has to pay 75 for his electric bill. So I'm just going to subtract 75 and $50 for his cable bill. So he has to spend 50 on his cable bill. So we're going to subtract that as well. Then it goes, he received one paycheck worth 750. So now he's making money. So I'm going to put plus 750. And then he's going to, then he won $200 playing the lottery. So since he's gaining money, I'm going to put a plus, all right? And calculators are fair game for every question on this video unless I say otherwise. So we can run this in the calculator here. 1000 minus 650, 615 minus 75 minus 50 plus 750 plus 200 and we'll see that A is the correct answer. So let me show you the written solution now. You can pause the video if you'd like to. Take all the time you need to study this. And whenever you're ready, we'll go on to the next question. John, a basketball player, is practicing shooting foul shots. If he shoots 25 foul shots and makes 15 of them, what percent of the shots did he make? Is the answer A, B, C, D, or E? So now's your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, just unpause the video and we'll go over the answer. So on screen is the standard formula that most textbooks are going to use to teach percents for the GED. It's part over whole equals percent over 100. And if you're able to just look at a question like this and just intuitively kind of know what to do without using the formula, then that's great. And that's probably going to save you time. But I do want to take the time here just to, to quickly break down this formula. All right. Just because this is the formula is helpful, especially when you're starting out learning how to do these questions. So basically, all you have to do here is you have to understand that the part is the smaller number, all right? So I'm gonna take this 15, I'm gonna plug it into the formula in place of part. Then I'm gonna take this 25, the bigger number, and that is gonna be what I put in here for the whole. So when I rewrite this, I would have 15 over 25 equals percent over 100. Okay, so I wanna multiply by 100, and that way the hundreds will cancel out on the right-hand side, and whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other. So essentially, all you're doing here, you do 15 divided by 25 times 100, and that is going to give you the answer, which is 60%. Now, I'm sure someone watching this, maybe you said to yourself, all you have to do is do 15 divided by 25, then multiply by 100 and get the answer. And if you knew how to do that without using the formula, then you're ahead of the game and you did a great job. All right. But if not, know that this formula is a perfectly valid way to do this. In fact, for most people, I would recommend to memorize this formula and just use this formula for percent questions. And I have another formula that I teach sometimes it's is over of equals percent over 100. And so I'm going to show you the written solution right now. And the written solution actually shows you kind of a different way to think of this question. So you just got to find what works for you. What is the perimeter of the Pentagon? 
Is it A, 54, B, 39, C, 76, D, 133, or E, none of the above? So let me turn it over to you. Now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this question out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so for a question like this, all you want to do to find the perimeter here is you just take all the numbers and you're just going to add them all up. All right, so we would do 7 plus 4 plus 12 plus 13 plus 3. Okay, and calculators are fair game here. And if we do it in our calculator, we see that it's going to be B39. And I don't have a written solution for this question because hopefully uh, this is pretty straightforward here. Uh, so whenever you're ready, we'll go ahead to the next question. Jenna has a jar of coins that contain 60 quarters, 300 pennies, 100 dimes, and 40 nickels, which the following is false. A. The jar contains $30 in total. B. The ratio of dimes to pennies is less than 1. C. The ratio of dimes to quarters is greater than 1. D. Removing dimes from the bag would decrease the ratio of dimes to pennies if the number of pennies is kept the same. E. Adding pennies to the bag would increase the ratio of dimes to pennies if the number of dimes is kept the same. So now is your chance to pause the video. And especially don't worry if you have trouble with this question because this is a hard question. And so whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so like I said, you know, this is the hardest question in this video, in my humble opinion here. And if you have trouble with the other questions, know that this isn't the only hard question in this video, but I think it's definitely the hardest in my opinion. So basically, the first thing that I will do here, and maybe you approach this question differently, but the answer choice A says the jar contains $30 in total. So let's first check if this is true or false. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an equation here. Okay, so we know that one quarter is worth 25 cents or 0.25. Okay, so, and we know that we have 60 quarters. All right, so to find out the, how much the quarters are going to be worth in dollars, I would do 0.25 times 60. So let me add the pennies to that now. So for 300 pennies, we know that one penny is worth one cent or 0 0.01 times 300, right? Because we have 300 pennies. All right, and now we're going to add the dimes here. So basically, we know that one dime is worth 10 cents or 0.1, and we're going to multiply that by 100 because there are 100 dimes. Okay, and then we're also going to deal with the 40 nickels. All right, so one nickel is worth 0 0.05 or 5 cents. Okay, and we have 40 nickels, so I'm going to multiply by 40. Okay, so basically, uh, this isn't the only way to look at this, but you know, all you have to do is just plug this in your calculator. And you will figure out that the jar contains $30 worth of coins. So A checks out because remember, we're looking for which one is false. So we confirmed A is true. So now let's get into the more scarier sounding answer choices here. Uh, B, the ratio of dimes to pennies is less than one. So don't worry, we're going to break this down here for you. D over P equals 100 over 300. So basically, to figure out if, if B is true or false, all I'm going to do is I am going to take the number of dimes, which is 100, and divide by the number of pennies, which is 300. All right, so if I do this in my calculator, and you could simplify this if you wanted to, but you really don't need to. You can just do 100 divided by 300 in your calculator. And we'll see that the ratio of dimes to pennies is equal to 0.333 and a bunch of other threes. If I take the number of dimes and divide the number of pennies, I get 0.333, which is less than one. So B is a true statement. So I'm going to take it out because we're looking for which of the following is false. So now let's look at C. So if you had trouble following what I did to see if B was true or false, okay, let's let's look at C here now, and it's basically the same process, okay? So I'm just going to make a bar here just to kind of keep the work separate here. So the ratio of dimes to quarters is greater than one. So if you had trouble following what I did with B, just think about how would you figure out if C is true or false? Okay, well, I'm going to do the same thing. All right, so D over Q is equal to the number of dimes, which is 100. And I know it's 100, remember, because it just tells me right here, 100 dimes. And the number of quarters is 60. Okay, so I'm just going to put in 60 here for Q. Okay, and so if you wanted to, you could simplify this fraction, but it's probably just going to take uh, extra time to do that because you can just simply plug 100 over 60 in your calculator. And if you do that and you round it, you would get 1.67. Okay. 
doesn't matter if you've rounded or not, but the number really is 1.6 and a bunch of sixes and a seven on the end. So I just rounded it to 1.67. But what we want to do is we want to see, is this number greater than one? Well, yes, it is. 1.67 is greater than one. So C is true. Okay, so now let's look at D. Removing dimes from the bag would decrease the ratio of dimes to pennies if the number of pennies is kept the same. So let's test that. So let's revisit this ratio here, which was D over P when we had 100 divided by 300. So let's remove some dimes. So I don't know, let's say we take out 50 dimes here. All right, just as an example, you could take out one, you could take out two. Uh, it just says removing some dimes. So let's say we take out 50. We're just doing this just to test what happens when we remove dimes and keep the pennies the same. It's all I'm doing here. Hopefully this makes sense. So in my calculator, I'm just going to do 50 divided by 300 and I get point one six seven after I round. So what's a bigger number? 0.333 or 0.167? Well, hopefully you see that 0.33 is a bigger number. So what we figured out is that if I take the number of dimes and reduce it, but I keep the number of pennies the same, the ratio is going to decrease. Okay. And I know it decreased because before the ratio was equal to 0.333, now, if after I remove some dimes, the ratio is 0.167, which is a smaller number. All right, so let me take D out. So we're now left with E. Adding pennies to the bag would increase the ratio of dimes to pennies if the number of dimes is kept the same. Okay, so if we look at E, this time what we're going to do is we are going to keep the number of dimes the same, but we're going to increase the pennies, and we're going to see what happens to the overall ratio. So remember, all right, in the original case here, we had... 0.333, that was what our ratio of dime to pennies was equal to. In this case, we want to keep the dimes the same, so we're gonna keep the dimes as 100, but we're gonna increase the number of pennies now. If the number of pennies was originally 300 and we increase it, let's just pick any random number that's bigger than 300. So let's say, for example, 350. In my calculator, I'm gonna do 100 divided by 350, and I see that I get 0.2. 286 if I round, something like that, depending on how you round. And 0.286 is smaller than 0.333. So E is actually a false statement, which means this is the right answer here. Okay. And if you take nothing else away from this example, I want you to understand this. All right. Think about it this way. Let's say that we have a chocolate bar and you're going to split that chocolate bar with one friend. Okay. So if you're splitting that with one, you're splitting the one chocolate bar with one friend you're both going to get half, okay? You can split it into two equal pieces, all right? But if now two other friends come along, now you've got four people total, and you're going to split that chocolate bar up if you want to split it up equally. Everyone's going to get a smaller piece of chocolate. So everyone will get a piece that's equal size, but it's going to be smaller, all right? So if you keep the top number the same whenever you're dividing, but you take that bottom number and you increase it, all right? The number is overall going to get smaller. That's just like... If you want to split a chocolate bar with one other person and you each want to get an equal piece, you get half of the chocolate bar. But now you have four people come along total and you've got yourself and three other people. You're each going to get a smaller piece of that chocolate bar. All right. So if you take away nothing else, take away that from this video. Really appreciate you watching. Good luck on your test.